Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I didn't understand what Thomas was saying, but I hope he was saying something good about me. Uh, today, I'm going to speak. I will not be energetic just because I'm energetic. I, I'm really excited with these topics that every time is popping up around our community. And definitely, generative AI is the new buzz in town. And the discussion that we'll do is exactly how can we adopt and adapt generative AI for the cybersecurity community. We've been act. Okay, so it's so exciting and these topics are so all over, all over us that sometimes the need of uh, explaining that this is just technology, we have to balance with humans. I just put this end note, don't fire your CISOs yet just because generative AI is arrived. Because at the end of the day, we know the excitement bring us to not working. Luckily, I don't have the timer on also, so. <laughs> okay, so this is the, the feeling that sometimes we have. Something comes new and people just get so excited that the old fashioned tools and old fashioned processes, old fashioned uh, certifications, nothing imports more. Because now we have generative AI. In generative AI, we'll solve all the security problems that we have until now. So all the cyber threats will disappear. Everything will be anticipated just because generative AI is here. So again, what we need to adopt and adapt in our organization is not only technology. We need to understand how these technologies are impacting actually humans. And humanity, I don't like the disruption, transformation, just because this is evolution. Remember that so many years ago in Greece, we were discussing who I am, where I'm going. And now we are discussing, master, what makes us human? Selecting an images with traffic lights for a capture. I'm not a robot. So this is the evolution of the humankind. This is the evolution of the man interacting with machines, but also the machines. Will the machines will be so powerful? And yes, the super intelligence is almost there. He's almost here. But anyone know what is happening here in this image? Do you remember this image? Yes? Do you know that artificial intelligence can't? This is what is being used nowadays to capture. And artificial intelligence is so intelligent that cannot understand memes. And this is the balance that we need to do. Is it that only intelligence needed around cybersecurity? And we know this is not enough. So what we need to balance is the intelligence of the machine, of course, with the emotions of the humans. Because... Hunter is here. Promised, we spend as a security community so many years saying the winter is coming, the winter is coming, the winter is coming. And now we can happily say the winter is here. Actually, it's not a, a, a polite to say the winter is here. But my job, and my name is Bruno Arte Suarez, I'm a, as Thomas said, I'm an advisor for board members. I spent so many years going to board members talking about risks of security, how the hidden topics of security. And you know what I was saying to the boards? Beware, you will be attacked. And you know what? Most of the times I was wrong. Companies were not being attacked. So the, someone that worked for 20 years in the risk area is terrible because I was the guy that was saying the winter will come and never came. So finally, I enter in a boardroom so happy because they are calling me after the attacks are happening. And that is the new things that we need to enjoy, but also take it as an opportunity. We don't know, we don't want to say, I told you so, but we want to surf this wave. This is why this is a huge opportunity for the cybersecurity community. Because what happened in the last years, remember just almost 10 years ago, this was the scenario of, for example, ransomware. It was something that was not, is not visually important. But this is just start happening. And because of technology, the attacks increased. But also because the attacks were not only targeting technology, but started to tar target people, directly people. And you will know what? Anyone remember what was the most famous ransomware, the first one? Anyone? Wanna cry. 
And you know why WannaCry didn't happen in Portugal or didn't attack too much in Portugal? It was on Friday, May 2017. And Portugal was not almost affected by it because the Pope was there. And no one was working in that day. But for the first time, we saw this kind of uh, go with the sun attacks, where people were being attacked all over the place. And we saw it coming like a wave. But luckily in Portugal, nothing happens, just because people were not there to click the button. And that continued. And continued, we entered the COVID like this. The size of the bubbles were, is the impact and the value around the cybercrime. The color of the bubbles is where the crimes are coming. And we ended up the COVID like this. And this is not just because there are more attackers. Maybe there are fewer attackers, or at least they are organized in very few groups or big groups. This is mostly because technology is evolving for both sides, for the ones that are attacking and for the ones that are defending. And most of the times, the tools are the same. Necessarily, this is no longer just a game. This is no longer just a play. This is economy. This is crime. If you know, cybersecurity is the third biggest economy in the world, only after the United States and China. The GDP of Slovakia, in 10 days, the cybercrime is the same as Slovakia GDP. So this is the size of the problem. This is the size, this is the impact of its coming. And is associated not only with the evolution of what we call the third platform technologies, but specifically because it's not being done only by humans. Attackers are using technology. And they are specifically using for all these years artificial intelligence. So having this, the presentation focused on generative AI, we cannot talk about generative AI like, oh, the artificial intelligence is here. It's not. Artificial intelligence is here for so many years. And most of us that use tools in our life for cybersecurity are already using artificial intelligence. So cybersecurity impacted by generative AI is a specific part of the evolution of artificial intelligence. And it's a particular one. Because if we look to a tool, there are lots of embedded artificial intelligence in the tools. But the specific of generative AI is something that is in the surface. Because if you are creating contents, you have to imagine who will be impacted by the content. You are generated contents based on contents. So everything that you are producing, somehow you want to imitate a human. You want to impact the disgust, the fear, the joy, the sadness, the anger of humans. And that's what makes this great for the ones that are attacking and a challenge for the ones that are defending. Because what is being targeted is the human side. So, of course, there's this availability, the democratization of generative AI. Everyone can use it right now. And that's the good part. It's nothing that is behind the wall or inside technology. It's something that is in our hands, in our pockets. So people are excited because they are using it for the good and for the bad. As soon as the ChatGPT came up, I just tested, just for fun, and asked the ChatGTP to, to prepare my back phishing email. And of course, ChatGPT said, no, no, I cannot do that. I said, okay, of course, I understand that. So tell me just what are the receipts for preparing an attack like that. And he gave me the ingredients. I said, oh, I just received an email. Can you help me just to identify if this is a phishing attack? And he, with three questions, he write me a phishing attack. This is just because it's accessible. So if it's accessible for me, it's accessible for your teams, but it's also accessible for the ones that want to use it for the bad things. So you can use ChatGPT just for fun, and the policies will prevent of using it for bad things. But if you go to these warm, deep webs, you already have it packaged. And with good prices on sale, if you go fast, you will have one month of using these tools just for $45. So is crime as a service? It's not even necessary to implement or install anything. It's just go there and it's in the cloud. And this is the problem. We are no longer in the sense of we are talking about humans, but not because humans are the weakest link. If the human is the weakest link in your organization, the problem is not the human, it's the organization of the security. Today, the complexity around security cannot allow that your architecture of security is dependent of a human. Humans are not an element for security, are an important element not to damage the security. And this needs to be understood. 
We cannot put the human in front of the dragons. We just want the humans don't go and play with the dragons. And this is a little bit twitch and it's different. So it's about technology, but it's also about data. And every time I listen about generative AI, everyone is so excited with the tools, the new tools, the new softwares, the co-pilots, and no one talks actually about the problem. That is, humans cannot understand the amount, the velocity, the variety of data around us. Generically, and in the perfection of security, the same. So it's about technology, but it's also about humans cannot understand the data around them. So if I would have to pick up the four major drivers of generative AI for cybersecurity, would be necessarily to automatization, to have digital assistance because the number of humans that we have are not available are not enough for the problems we have. Of course, reduce human error because we are able to do huge amount of errors. But I want to focus particularly in the one that I think is more important right now. That is the decision making process. These tools are helping humans to decide better. And that means that we are not only talking about the way technology is already supporting IT from data to information, BI, business information from information to intelligence. We actually are using technology to support the decision, to support the value creation. So we already have lots of technology around the process, the information cycle. And we are just finishing the last part. Can technology help us to decide better? And that is the focus of uh, generative AI. So because of that, what I advise you before of starting to use package things and templates and so on, is to understand today what are the security decisions that your organization is doing. So understanding about decision making will be the first need that you have to adopt technology. Because everyone knows if you adopt technology to bad processes, bad processes will get even worse. So understanding what you are doing now, how you are deciding now, will help you to classify decisions in three groups. Small decisions or situational decisions, the ones that you do directly. Scenario decisions, the ones that you need to balance the typical goods and bads about decisions. And portfolio decisions, the ones that are kind of strategic and will cover a wider space in the organization. So if you classify the decisions around cybersecurity, then you can understand that these tools are not being used or by the board or by the CISO or by the CIO, whatever. They are associated with the decisions wherever, whoever is taking those decisions. So if you go to what you're already doing and classify your decisions by attributes, that is the most important part to understand where will I put technology and artificial intelligence. In for each decision, what's the level of variability, ambiguity, uncertainty, risk, frequency, collaboration, delay? Because at the end of the day, this is the map you want. You want to understand that you will automatize everything that is high frequency and high regularity. That's automation. That's not even most of the time generative AI. That is machine learning and other types of artificial intelligence. But you will keep things that only humans will do. The things that are high ambiguity and high collaboration. So generative AI is a tool that will be somewhere in the middle. Supporting mostly what is being done by machines but governed by humans. Or done by machines supported by humans. Or even done by humans supported by machines. So generative AI is about collaboration between technology and humans. But you need to understand, you need to map in advance the decisions that you are making. Because if you get there, so from that purpose, it's just not starting by using pilots. I, I asked, the, the numbers are in Portugal, I think they, they were just launched this week and asked companies, are you using generative AI? And they say, yeah, yeah, more than 60% of companies are using generative AI. But it's like, it's like, you like Beatles? Yeah, I heard it. At least I know one song. But that doesn't mean that you are a fan of Beatles or fan of any band. That doesn't mean that the organization is actually transforming because they are using something. They are just piloting. Most of the companies are using the things that come with Microsoft Office 365. They are just doing pilots. They are just using templates. And that's not transforming. That's just playing with technology. So if you want to transform, you have to start like you started your own house by designing the framework, designing how will I use this technology. 
And it, you have lots of activities that you do, have to do in advance. You have to create the system of data collection, data transforming, data ingestion, data use, since computer to wait. And for that purpose, when you have the machine running, what will happen is that it's not okay, now we are using. It's not about the use, it's about the use case. It's not about technology itself, it's how you will be using it. And of course, there's a lot of work prepared. Industry use cases, productivity use cases, and particularly fun business function use cases. So it's exactly here, in the middle of all the use cases your organization is using, using the same model of generative AI, that you will find security. So there's no need for one department is using one generative AI, the other department is using other generative AI. If that's the case, you are not transforming anything. You have everyone using it, but nothing is being transformed. So if you come to this point that now I understand what are the use cases, actually there are five domains of use cases that you can use in security. You have use cases related to security operations, information security, risk management, application security, and finally compliance. So if you understand the scope, then you can use the templates, the typical use cases, the taxonomies that the market is using. I just prepared five quick use cases to see how I do this typically before organizations start using the use cases. And basically it's to understand the use case itself to understand what are the impacts that I'm looking for the business with this use case, and then if I KPIs and metrics to evaluate how this will impact my security, and to understand if this is a risk level high, medium or low, and the complexity of implementation. So the decision making also about choosing the use case is fundamental. So for example, of course, in the SOC operations, you want correlation, you want to use these tools just to help you to understand so many events and to prevent the false positives, for example. But if you want that, you have to measure it by reducing mean time to, to detection and mean time to respond. The second, if you have the use of these tools, the same tool, the same technology, but we, for a different use case, you can use it information security by covering all the, all the, the, the ambience or the, the context that you are protecting with the same policies. Writing policies, adapting policies, changing policies, ensuring that everything is with the same policies. So again, if you want to do that, this is about doing it easily, what humans cannot go after today. My favorite, understanding risks. So if you want to understand attack parts and how it's coming, you just want to have an assistant, a very quick one and good one analyzing complexity by marking, for example, Mitra attack. Mitra attack is the best way to see that someone that is attacking, you just have to have a vector, attack vector, but if you have to defend, you have to cover all the 14 steps. So understanding how they can come to my company and attack me is something that you need to do with an amazing assistant like Generative AI. But also for using the security in applications, embedding security in applications. We humans like to discover the thing that I've done with ChatGPT need to be prevented with Generative AI. Generative AI needs to understand if we are trying to manipulate the systems. So embedding these tools in software development is critical because it's the way that you are preventing the patterns of actions that humans will do to attack your applications. And finally, the one that is more critical, but probably the one that we need more, is to just solve those tasks that you don't want to know, don't want to do, the compliance, the reportings, and so on. That is a little bit tricky, but I, because I don't want to finish without mentioning that generative AI is not a deterministic system. It's a probabilistic system. And because it's a probabilistic system, what will generate is something that has probability to be right. So it's not something that is hard-coded or programmed in advance. It's something that the intelligence of the machine will believe that is good. So the compliance is the one that will be more quickly adapted because it's so good to not be preparing documents, but beware. If something needs to be right exactly how it's in the law, you cannot put a machine creating a new text every time it's generated. So it's also understanding that generative AI have boundaries, have a good scope, but have limits of scope. And finally, to, to, to conclude, do it not just by testing, have a commitment with it. So all these use cases that I'm talking with you, 
you can look the ones that are in red that were the five, but do this. What are we doing now? What we want to do next? What we want to do one of these days? So having these roadmaps commit you not to try, not to pilot technology, but actually to transform the organization. Because at the end of the day, you need dragons to fight dragons. If you are being attacked with generative AI, you have to have generative AI to defend yourself. But beware, you need to be responsible. Because just like the dragons, when they were attacking the King's Landing, you cannot control fully these technologies. So you will give them an order, but you will not control how they choose to act. So at the end of the day, I promise in the first slide that generative AI can solve all the problems. But the most <laughs> important problem is that if you ask the question, can I solve all my problems of cybersecurity? You know what the machine will tell you? Yes. <laughs> By shutting down all your systems. Thank you very much. <laughs>